Yes! You think you're... You think you're so smart, huh? Well, when the lab comes back, we'll see how smart that sweet, sweet urine of yours really is, won't we? Won't we, P-boy, huh? P-P? P? Drug testing for cannabis. It works well enough. But sometimes, cannabis consumers set themselves up for failure. But let's ask some questions here. Why do some people keep testing positive for THC? What can you do to avoid a false positive test? Can secondhand smoke lead to a positive test? And do rare cannabinoids like CBG, CBN, and even CBD leave you open for testing positive? We have all the answers to these FAQs coming up. Q intro. Just a quick bit of background, THC and other cannabinoids are fat soluble and not water soluble. So even small amounts of THC like to stick around in our fat cells, only to be re-released as carboxy THC, which is filtered out through our kidneys, filtered out through urine over a long period of time. On top of this, the half-life of THC in the body varies, and it varies on how frequently you use cannabis. So it takes around 36 hours for the amount of THC in a light user to be cut in half. And four days for a moderate user and seven days for someone who is an everyday or every other day user. So this means cannabis could stick around in your system for months, two to three months potentially. So cannabis is kind of like a fun house guest that asks if they can spend the night tonight and then for three months straight. But the best way to not test positive is to not use THC at all. That's the best way. Is that, is that good? All right, let's talk about how you can get away with it. Now, how could someone self-sabotage here? Diet and exercise can be the decider on whether or not you test positive, but not how you think. The first thing is obviously hydration. The more water you drink, the more you're likely to pee, pee, pee out that THC metabolite, carboxy THC. But this needs to be matched by sufficient electrolytes, namely B vitamins. Secondly, consuming more zinc at the level of a zinc supplement is likely to mask THC in your system. So this could help you avoid a positive test. Some studies show that excess zinc can mask a positive THC test for around 12 to 24 hours. But as for exercise, it's not what you think. Exercise is a lot like that random friendly woman that ends you on social media. She's not really your friend here. Remember what I said, THC is stored in fat cells. So if you start to metabolize fat cells, whether it's through diet, through exercise, you are more likely to release more THC into your system. So strenuous exercise and calorie restriction can actually increase the risk of a positive test. This was shown in the British Journal of Pharmacology way back in 2009, and they even called it a THC flashback. That shows the extent to which THC will re-enter the system. If you're into fitness, exercise, all types of uh, gym, Gym, gymnasia, you may want to avoid it before doing a drug test because it could be doing more harm than good. You are better off spending that time with friends because their secondhand smoke won't affect you, right? But what if you're actually innocent? Like, like really though, like, I don't know, maybe you went to a Three Doors Down concert and you accidentally inhaled some secondhand reefer from a guy in the parking lot with a hand tattoo. It happens. Could you test positive? The common parlance of the time says, no, no way, don't worry about it. As long as you don't get a contact tie or anything, you'll be back enjoying some terrible music in no time with a clean THC test. Well, let's see what science says about this. The journal Forensic Science International found that secondhand cannabis smoke, or passive cannabis inhalation, as they put it, can be found in urine. And not just urine, but urine, blood, and hair. The old public transit trio. But as a caveat, this study and others say it would have to be an extreme situation. Perez, Reyes, and all did a very elegant study. They looked at 80 urine samples from non-cannabis smokers, 24 hours after they were exposed to secondhand smoke. And of the 80 only two had levels of THC over 20 nanograms per milliliter, well below the 50 nanograms per milliliter threshold. 
The study was pretty great because it also varied on the size of the room. Some were placed in a large room, some with smokers near them, some with smokers far away. And there was even a subsection that were placed in a station wagon with people close to them smoking. So while secondhand cannabis smoke causing a positive test is not very likely, it is possible. But given the odds of a positive test, saying you were just close to a smoker might not hold any water. But it will hold blood, urine, and hair. All right, before we take this one on, you need to know a few things. If your product isn't pure CBG, CBN, or whatever, and does have some THC in it, you do have a likelihood of testing positive. So when I speak about the following cannabinoids, I mean so in the purest sense. So let's start off with CBG. CBG by itself will not cause you to have a positive test for a few reasons. The first one is that the CBG metabolite is not looked for in the standard drug test. So sweet, innocent, gentle, genteel, Grandpa CBG is completely innocent if you test positive for THC. Do not blame him for your problems. If you're only using CBG and yet you test positive, it's likely because the CBG you got isn't very good. If you're getting something as health focused as CBG from a guy named Green Eyes behind the learning annex, you kind of brought it on yourself. Now, CBN, this one can actually be a little bit of a problem, mainly because of the chemical makeup of CBN. If, if you had seen our previous video on CBN, you would know that it is derived from THC. CBN is downstream from THC when THC degrades. So with CBN, there is a possibility of testing positive because the molecules are so similar. And the same thing goes for Delta-8. So CBG is good. CBN could leave you open for a positive test. Same thing with Delta-8. But what about CBD? CBD has become notorious for causing failed drug tests in spite of not causing a high. Now, why would we see this? The first reason is that a lot of cases where this is happening happen in jurisdictions without a regulated market. These were most likely unregulated, untested products that had a THC level above the recommended 0.3%. And when you exceed that 0.3% limit, you are more likely to test positive for THC. When many of these unregulated products were tested, they had THC levels far and above the 0.3% cutoff for CBD products. These pure CBD products were not purely CBD. The second reason someone who's only using CBD might test positive is they're a liar. However, the third reason is a matter of science. And it's a reason not a lot of people know. Here's a tip. If you are taking a drug test and you are using legitimately only CBD, there could still be a problem. And it's because of the type of test you're taking. The common machine used to test for drugs is a GCMS machine. Many of these GCMS machines require a chemical called TFAA. This is an agent that's added to the sample. And when you do this, a reaction occurs, a reaction that makes THC and CBD completely indistinguishable. So science, you fail again. So let's say you're honest and only using regulated actual CBD and yet you test positive. This could be an out. You could inquire on the type of drug test that's being done and prove your innocence. So in this case, a positive test might not be your fault. It might be the fault of TFAA. Just keep that one, you know, in your, in your pocket for later, next to your CBD, right? So there you go. Now you know the limitations as it comes to tests, rare cannabinoids, and to secondhand smoke. Also how exercise isn't necessarily good in most cases. Use this information carefully and responsibly, as always. And if you're using anything I've said to weasel your way out of responsibility or safety, well, the only thing I have to say is, confess! <laughs>